Hi, welcome to episode 313 of the Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy K on Ravelry, Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at the Corner of Knit and Tea.com, where this episode and every episode show notes will be. And I sell my patterns and hand spun yarns on Etsy in a shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea. Hi, how are you? I hope that you are doing well. It is Monday, January 19th here in the United States. It is a, I'm sorry, it is Monday, January 18th. Why am I having so much trouble with this? I think it's the, hang on, check the phone. It is Monday, January 18th. Here in the United States, it is a federal holiday um, recognizing Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I actually did work today, but I have spent a little time today thinking about um, the work that Dr. King did in our nation and how much farther we still have to go, um, particularly in light of the events of recent weeks. Um, but that is what is going on here in the U.S. We are just a couple days away from the inauguration and a transfer of power. Things are a little crazy in the U.S. Um, and I'm sure we're all anxious, both in the U.S. and worldwide, um, to see things settle down a little bit. So this weekend, we mostly stuck around the house. Um, the coronavirus numbers here are not good. Um, and so we stayed indoors. We had some snow on Friday. Um, not a ton, but a dusting, maybe about an inch. Um, and then I just stayed indoors and crafted this weekend. I also baked. Um, we have a variety of flowers and things in the cupboard. And at the beginning of the pandemic, I insisted we buy lots of oatmeal because I figured it would be a good, if we got stuck at home, something to eat. Um, and so um, my husband has been asking me whether I'm going to use up these supplies. So I baked oatmeal cookies um, and we actually had some almond flour in the cupboard from some gluten-free baking that he had done for a friend. So um, I tried a new to me recipe and it was quite good. The cookies are a little bit dry and crunchy, um, but they are delicious. This week it's going to be brownies um, because my husband's birthday is on Friday and his favorite cake is German chocolate cake. And while I wasn't really ready to break a cake, bake a cake. In the past I have baked brownies and then um, put ice, iced the brownies with the um, coconut pecan icing. So he's super excited for that because that's his favorite thing and I thought I should make him something fun for his birthday since unfortunately we can't do much celebrating otherwise. So um, that's what we're doing and his birthday present, um, he already got it. He wanted a ninja um, all-in-one uh, blending food processor system, mostly to make smoothies um, because he is still training to do an Ironman. He was training to do it this past year. And of course it got canceled because of everything else going on. So he is going to try and do it this year. It, has, it is his goal to um, complete an Ironman by the time he is 50 and this Friday he turns 49. So he's got one year left um, and that's what he is working on this year. So, and I am cheering him on from the side. Um, I will tell you that an Iron Man does not sound like my idea of a good time. For those of you unfamiliar with it, an Iron Man is, um, it is a triathlon and what they do is they swim for two and a quarter miles, then they um, bike for 110 miles, and then they run a marathon, which is 26 miles. It is grueling, and like I said, it is not um, my idea of good time, but it is something that my husband really, really wants to do, and so I am trying to be supportive and encouraging um, and, and support him as he works toward that goal. So weekends for us are lots of him exercising and me crafting. <laughs> so let's get into the rest of the podcast. What I am wearing today, this is a Carta, a pattern by Kate Davies. It is knit up in bulky weight yarn, which means it is nice and cozy. I used a Cloudborn 
um, which used to be um, Craftsy and Blueprints house yarn. I don't know if it still is. Um, I used a Cloudborn Bulky. Um, it is not super wash and it is kind of in a mold wine colorway. Um, and I really do like this sweater. It's oversized, it's loose, um, but it's nice and comfy. The yarn is wearing fair. Um, it is pilling quite a bit. I had a feeling that might be the case. Um, which is fine. I, I sort of knew it going in um, and mostly this is a house sweater anyway. Well, <laughs> everything is a house everything right now. So um, that's fine. The tea that I am drinking, I saw this today and really wanted it. It is in a Ziploc bag because it started to um, uh, leak a little, I don't know what the word is for like crumbs, but it started to leak a little bit and so I didn't want it to get everywhere. This is from the Tea House, which was a tea shop I visited in Covent Gardens uh, two years ago now, and um, it is their creme caramel, and I'm drinking that today in a pottery mug from, um, I don't remember where. I think this one was a gift, so, um, but it is a pretty mug and it's keeping my tea nice and warm. And that is just a really rich black tea with a little bit of caramel and cream in it. And it's lovely. So let's talk about the knits. I do have one finished object. I was not intending to finish this so quickly, but I guess once I started it, I was on a tear. And that is my stash busting blanket that I created with my Karen uh, jumbo cake. Uh, this started out as a uh, blanket to use up some yarn that was in the stash. It was a Karen jumbo cake, which is, I don't remember how many grams, but it is 600, I think it's 300 grams and a little over 600 yards. Um, and it was given to me by a friend that I did some babysitting for in lieu of payment. I wouldn't let her pay me and so she showed up one day with yarn. Um, <laughs> and then about partway through I decided that um, it wasn't going to be quite enough. I think I got to about here with the first cake. Um, and I decided that it wasn't going to be quite big enough. Um, I wanted to go a little further, so I ordered another cake and used a chunk of another cake. Um, I still have some of this cake left over. I think I basically used about one and a half cakes. Um, and I will say that um, this is a reason, there is a reason why you should buy your yarns together because even commercial yarns, dye lots can differ. Um, if you look at the blacks together, you can see that the one over here is much more charcoal and this one is more black. I don't care because this is just a blanket that I'm going to donate. Um, and because they're not right next to each other, I don't think it's gonna be that noticeable. Um, but, but it is a good lesson on why you would want to um, purchase your yarn at the same time. Um, for a project that you um, that you want your colors to match for. The finished blanket, um, this is a garter stitch blanket. I knit it, it's, I've got it folded in half. It's a garter stitch blanket. I knit it on size US 9 um, needles. And um, I don't remember how many stitches I cast on. I think around... Oh, I, I don't know. Um, I did measure it and the blanket measures about 32 by 36, um, which is roughly the size I was aiming for. I was aiming for a baby blanket um, and I had a couple ideas on where to donate, but my husband is also going to be um, learning to knit some blankets for a charity project. Um, he needs to do some service for work this year. And so I thought maybe I would donate um, my blankets this year along with his. I have um, several skeins of Stylecraft DK left over from the blankets that I did this year. Um, one of the kits that I ordered came with 18 colors and I only needed uh, 15. So I pulled out three of them. And so I still have those three skeins and um, I ordered three more skeins games from um, Lovecrafts so that I could go ahead and put together two separate blankets. Some of the colors that I had were more pink and some of them that I had were more like peachy orange. And so I ordered complementary colors so that I can create two more blankets um, with those. And I went to start it last night and tried to cast on during knit night. Um, my knit night is now twice a week. Um, and don't cast on while you're talking to friends because it never works out. I cast on and I was all set to go and I started knitting and I knit the first row of my pack Pattern, which was important because it was a setup row and um, I didn't have enough stitches. So I need to cast that on when I am not talking to other people and, um, you know, wrapped in conversation. Um, and then that will be my new blanket that will go next to the computer so that I can work on it during conference calls and such. 
um, and so my hope is to do a few more blankets this year. The Stylecraft I used in this right around um, a thousand yards and the Stylecraft DK yarn is about 330 yards per skein so my thought is that I will use three skeins and hopefully end up with appropriate sized blankets to donate. I believe our project of choice is going to be um, Project Linus and um, they will accept as small as 30 by 30 and then up to um, I'm trying to think up to about 60 by 72 or something like that for older kids um, so my plan is to just work on those throughout this year and have them ready to donate so that is um, the only finished object this week everything else is in various states of progress and I have brought four projects to talk about so the first project that I'm going to talk about is my Comfort Fade Cardigan. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and um, I am knitting it in Zen Yarn Garden Superfine DK in a uh, color fade that I picked out and they dyed a color for me. They did have color fade, comfort fade cardigan kits available, um, or you can put together your own with their yarn or with whatever yarn you have. It is um, a top down raglan shaped cardigan. Um, you knit it in reverse stockingette, which is the trick for making the yarns blend rather than look super stripy. Um, and I'm not going to give away too many more details. I am knitting the size medium, which I believe is a uh, fits around a 39 inch bust. I have a 38 inch bust and it's meant to be worn with a bit of ease. So I have something that looks decidedly sweater-like. No sleeves yet, but I finished the body this weekend. So I um, am on a good trajectory to finish this month. Up at the top, I have a silver colorway. And then in the middle, I have a um, kind of gray over dyed with red colorway. And then I have a red color that is over dyed with a little bit of black. And then I have black at the bottom. So um, the body is finished, like I said, and now I have two sleeves and a um, oversized shawl collar to knit. So, and things are going well. This knit up fairly quickly. It's a pretty simple, um, the raglan increases are always take forever because um, your stitch count just gets really large. Um, I'm hoping the sleeves will fly. My goal is actually to finish both sleeves this week. I don't know if that will happen. Um, but I would like to finish both sleeves this week and then do the collar the last week of the month if another sleeve bleeds over into that, um, so be it. So that is where I'm at. I took a picture this afternoon, but here's a good look at my fade. Um, and I am super, super pleased with it and um, really excited to have this to wear. I would like to finish this up because it is chilly and I think this will be nice and cozy. The super fine DK is um, superwash merino and a little bit of nylon and it is soft and squishy and just wonderful to work with. I obviously, I work with a lot of their yarns because I do um, sample knits for them. I have one coming up that I'll show you um but this is um actually for me i love their yarn um so and i use it in my personal stuff as well so next up um is the more though shawl by aaron corrup are you proud of me i brought the name today it has been on my on my um uh, show notes for the last several weeks and I keep saying I don't remember what it is. Um, today I went and looked and brought it for you. Um, I have made quite a bit of progress on this shawl. Last week when we talked I said I was over a quarter and probably about a third of the way through and I am getting towards two-thirds of the way done. Sometime in the next section that I'm about to do um, will be the two-thirds mark or more than two-thirds. Um, this is a lovely rectangular wrap. It is knit on the bias and it has alternating sections of garter, mosaic stitch, and then a pretty simple lace stitch. And I showed you last week, um, I started in, um, well, so I am knitting it in two yarns. One is the Zen Yarn, well, they're both um, Zen, yarn, Zen Yarn Garden Serenity Silk Plus which is a uh, merino cashmere silk blend. And I am using the natural for um, the mosaic sections. And then I am using um, these Lux cakes, which are beautiful. They are um, oversized 150 grams, 700 yards. Um, the yarn is 500 yards per 100 grams. That's what the white one is. Um, the Lux cakes are dyed, they're dyed in blanks and then rolled into cakes. 
Um, and again, these are supersized at 150 grams, 750 yards. One skein makes a generous shawl. I will break into this second skein for this shawl. This is what I have left of the current skein. As you can see, I am most of the way through the pink and I'm about to transition. Well, I have more pink, but then I'll transition back out to the purple and then I will pick it up in the purple middle here and keep going. My guess is I'll end somewhere in the pink. Um, the pattern calls for, I believe, a thousand yards of a um, fingering weight contrast color. In the pattern, um, or you know, if you purchase the pattern, um, the original design called for the neutral color to be the background and the variegated or um, gradient color to be the mosaic stitch. We are actually doing the opposite. So as I showed you last week, um, and I'm knitting this on the needle size called for, <clears throat> excuse me, which I think is a four. I'm pretty sure it's a four. Um, so, and I decided to go with the needle size called for because I have excess yarn for this and I should not run out. Here's hoping. Um, the only thing I could run out of would be the white and I really don't think I'm going to because I have quite a bit left and I don't have that many more sections to do. So we started with um, some garter stitch and a nice couple nice big sections of mosaic and then the mosaic sections get um, shorter and the uh, lace sections get longer and last week I was mostly in the purple section and I said I was starting to go into the pink and as you can see I am now well into the pink section although it is a magenta that has quite a bit of purple in it so it works really well. The colorway of the gradient is raspberry. So um, I am now working on a b the biggest, longest section of lace. There will be quite a few repeats here, so it's going to be longer than this one. Um, and then I will go back into um, larger sections of mosaic stitch as I finish off the wrap. So I think somewhere around here, I am about two thirds of the way through. Um, the wrap will be approximately <clears throat> when blocked, I think it said about 21 inches long and about 90 inches from point to point. Remember, it's knit on the bias. So at the bottom, you will also have, um, like you get all this length created from the triangle. So it's not quite as long as it sounds um, because it'll be from this point to the other point. Um, but my plan is to just work really hard on this. I do not think I will finish this this week. I think it will take one more week um, or a partial week, but um, this has been a pleasurable knit. I have, um, for the most part, memorized the stitch patterns at this point after doing so many repeats of them. Um, so I can uh, mostly work on it without having the pattern in front of me, which is really nice. Um, the pattern itself is about 550 rows and, um, as of now, I think I am right around 300. So, um, and by the time I finish this section, I'll be closer to 400. So that is kind of where I'm at with this one. Um, and again, I really like it. It's gonna be really pretty. Um, and it's really funny because a friend of mine comment, a friend and viewer commented on the, um, the uh, last video that she didn't think necessarily when I showed the colors that she was gonna like them together. Um, and I have to say, I totally agree with you. I felt the same way when I got it. However, um, in recent months, the, um, <coughs> excuse me, cup of tea, sip of tea. In recent months, um, some of the stuff that they have sent me for samples, um, I've looked at it and said, I don't know how that's going to look together. And then I go ahead and do it and it comes together beautifully. Like I just, I think this wrap is absolutely stunning and I wouldn't have necessarily envisioned it in the colors she sent, but I really, really, really like it. Um, and so what I have learned is to trust Roxanne. She and her husband are the owners of Zen Yarn Garden, and she was the original dyer behind Zen Yarn Garden. Um, so she developed all the colorways in the beginning. Um, and so I have learned to trust her eye because even when I don't think things will work well together, um, her eye is always spot on. I haven't knit anything for her that um, I don't, even if it's not my colors and like not the colors that I would wear, I would choose different colors to do the project. <clears throat> every time I finish something, I'm like, she picked the perfect colors for this. So that is this project on the needles and we'll be working on that this coming week. So moving on to a couple other projects on the needles. One of the things that I showed you last week was that I was starting to make Valentine socks for the kiddos. 
and I have one sock complete now. This is for Roxy for Valentine's Day. Um, I have the next sock. I am in the blue section right here, so I have it worked up through the heel, and I'm working on the gussets, finishing the gusset decreases, and getting into the foot. Um, the reason that I did not bring it is because it is in a pile of yarn barf right now. I was working in the pink color and I worked down and then all of a sudden it started this green color like it skipped the blue and went right into the green and there was a part of the pink that overlapped the part of the green and it was really um it was dyed very oddly it, it didn't look quite right and then I came I got about part way through the green and there was a knot in this green and this green and so I only had part of those stripes and so I was kind of frustrated and it looked like what they had tied on went the opposite direction because this green then went back into this green it was it was like completely backwards and I couldn't figure out what was going on and here's the thing um, Roxy is not that particular about the stripes. I totally could have made her fraternal socks, but it was bugging me because the socks should have matched because the skein should have continued going in the color order it was meant to go in. And I understand that sometimes you hit the end of the skein and you have to tie on another skein, so I wasn't completely upset to find a knot in there. Um, but to me, it should have kept going in the same color. Like this indicated that they tied it together after they finished dyeing it, which I thought was really, really weird. Um, unless they dye it in really big, I don't know. Anyway, um, so uh, the yarn barf is all over my desk now. It happened while I was on a conference call this afternoon and I had to go to the center of the ball and pull out another set of stripe repeats. And um, yeah, so it's a mess, so you don't get to see it, but I am most of the way through the second sock I will definitely finish that this week and then I need to go through my stash and figure out um, what colorway I'm gonna knit for miles. I have a Desert Vista Dye Works um, skein of yarn that has red stripes in it and I don't remember whether I mentioned that last week but I think I might pull that out and cake that up and knit socks for him. Yes I hear you saying wow she's going to use a full skein of Desert Vista Dye Works on a pair of socks for a toddler. No actually he's not a toddler anymore he's four. Um, no, but I have small feet and so I can knit a pair of socks for both him and myself out of a full skein of yarn. Um, and so I will knit, I will just knit the pair for him first rather than after I knit my socks, which is what I sometimes do. So these are for Roxy. This is Knit Picks Felici um, in the Spring Blooms colorway. I really, really like it. Um, I might, depending on how far I have to go through the skein to make the, um, sock match I might actually have enough to do I think um all of this yarn this is um roughly 50 percent of the ball and I think and the balls are 50 grams 200 or 220 yards um I think I'll actually have enough to do a pair of shorties for myself which would be kind of fun because I love these colors um so that is and if I have to I could probably find a contrast heel and toe if I needed to um so my hope is that I can do that for myself um, but I think I can make it work because I'll, ju I'll do um, just ribbing and go right into the heel. Anyway, so that is the first sock done. I hope to have um, the pair finished by the time we talk next and then maybe um, the next set started because I need to finish these towards the end of the month, very beginning of February if I want to get them in the mail. So the last thing that I cast on for, and this one will probably get dropped because I have some new stuff coming in this week I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I decided that I wanted to knit a hat and I wanted to use more of my hand spun this year. And I went looking in Wooly Wormhead's hats. She is both on Ravelry and on Payhip and she is um, working on getting her own site up and running. She is one of the designers who has had trouble um, with the Ravelry redesign. And so I want to support her. Um, Technically, I'm knitting a free pattern, but I plan to buy a couple patterns and I want to work through some of her hats this year. Her hats um, are full of interesting construction and textured stitches and short row shaping and all kinds of really cool things. She's a really innovative designer. Um, and this one is... Um, well, I, I get through saying that, and this one is um, a little different than normal, um, but I am knitting her uh, tubed hat. And um, this is a garter stitch hat, and I don't want to give away, well, I guess it is a free pattern, and she talks about it on her website. So um, it is a pattern where you knit sort of a flat swath of garter stitch. Um, and part of the reason that I picked this for hand spun is because I think garter stitch shows off beautiful hand spun to perfection. 
Um, and so it is a hat that is knit in a broad swath and then um, you connect it in a tube using some um, special stitches that she teaches you and then you have um, a little bit of treatment on the crown. So um, it's a pretty simple knit because you're just knitting like a big flat rectangle and then you're going to seam it together in interesting ways. Um, I am using the leftover um, hand spun. I used this in my night shift shawl which I did probably two years ago out of my own hand spun and this is the colorway Celine. It is from Into the World. It was a um, whew, uh, crazy Twisted and Arbitrary Spinning Group on Ravelry um, years ago. I guess they still do some, but not very frequently. Um, years ago, they did, um, they used to do spin-alongs where they would invite dyers several months of the year to come and be a featured dyer. Um, folks would pick out photos and um, for inspiration, we would vote on them and then the dyer would take the top voted upon photos and create colorways and we would all buy the colorways and spin them. And it was a super fun, um, super fun thing um, that we did. This colorway, which is turquoise and red and black, was um, inspired by a, a picture of Celine from Underworld, which was a vampire movie featuring Kate Beckinsale that was from years ago. Anyway, um, the colorway with the with the black and the blue and the red, it was just stunning and I loved how it spun up. And after I knit Night Shift, I still had quite a bit of the ball left. I think it was about 400 yards um, that I spun up when I started. So I did not use, I did not use that many on the night shift shawl. Um, so I am working on this. And like I said, I just love hand spun for garter stitch or um, garter stitch for hand spun because you get to see all the freaking colorways. Anyway, um, this is, um, it's slow going because it's small stitches. Um, it's basically knitting up at a fingering weight, even though I think the hat is written for DK weight. There's just a lot of stretch to it. Um, but I am knitting it up on the needle sizes called for. Maybe, I don't know. I might not be actually. I might have adjusted it for my um, yarn, but I am just working on this when I have a little bit of spare time and eventually this will be a hat. So um, that is it for all the knits that are on the needles right now. Um, I do not have a spin to show you. Unfortunately, I went to ply my yarn last night and um, I often ply yarn from a center ply ball um, and I pull from either end of the ball and something happened and it is a jumble. I am hoping that I can save it because it is gorgeous fiber. It is the Midnight Flannel, which is a merino silk in all these purples and blues. It's just beautiful. It's from Three Waters Farm and I was trying to ply it on our knit night call last night and um, it got all tangled and I couldn't deal with it. And so I just put it aside and I probably need to like rewind the ball and figure out where my problem is. And I just couldn't be bothered to do it last night. Um, so I can see it from here. I'm just looking at it. Um, I did not pick out another uh, fiber to spin because I am about to get a um, new chicken project. For those of you who have tuned in before, you know that I help a local fiber artist at, well, a local artist at the City Girl Farm um, create chicken footstools. And these are artistic pieces um, that can function as footstools, but are also um, very interesting decor. Anyway, I knit for them and um, I have a new chicken feather project coming in. I am going to be receiving four pounds of fiber to spin and then I need to knit for a large chicken. So I expect that's going to take up my spinning time in the next couple weeks, which means that I won't have anything exciting to show you, um, but I will be spinning lots behind the scenes. Um, so it'll be a few more weeks before I add more things to my shop. If I can straighten out this ball, I may try and um, go ahead and ply that up and get that up in the shop, um, but I'm just going to have to see how my time goes and as soon as the box arrives I need to kind of delve in so I can work on that. So that is what I've got for you today. Like I said, I fear this month is going to be a little bit of um, the same projects over and over and over again because I'm working on large things. I suspect next month I will be ready to work on smaller things um, and depending on what kinds of samples and things come in, hopefully I'll have a few more um, exciting projects to show you so it's not just the same stuff all the time. I hope that you are having a wonderful week. Um, I know that this, like I said at the beginning, this is an anxious week for many of us and we are hoping to find some relief at the end of it. 
Um, I hope that you are finding some time for yourself and crafting and keeping on and um, we just have to keep, the only way out is through and so I think we just have to keep ourselves going for a little while longer and um, you know, we're, we're between science and um, politics and everything else that is going on in the world, I just keep hoping we're, we're headed for better days in 2021. So I wish you all the best in this coming week and I will see you next week. And I will say, as I always do, happy spinning, happy knitting, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye.